<laughs> Did you miss me? Welcome back, beautiful beings of divine light, to the Luminary Podcast. I'm your host, professional psychic, seer, channel, interdimensional being of light. And you can call me Annie in this lifetime. How are ya? I missed you guys so much. And thank you all for all of the beautiful notes and letting me know that you were ready for the return of the podcast. You were ready for the return of the luminary. And there is no better time than right now. We have just stepped into one of the highest frequency years that we will ever experience in this lifetime. Welcome to 2024. Welcome to the new earth golden age. Yes, we have entered into the first year of the golden age on earth. Something that you and I have been working towards, creating, manifesting, all of that inner work, all of the revelations, all of the spiritual knowledge and emotional maturity has led us to this moment when we have walked through the gates into the new earth, into the golden city, into a golden age. So we are absolutely going to be talking about all of the astrology that has been happening right now. We are going to be talking about the Kali Yurga, which was the ending of one of the Hindu ages and how that moment in time has been measured. We're also going to be talking about Pluto moving into Aquarius, marking the first time that we are feeling like we are in the Aquarian age. Pluto will be in Aquarius for 20 years and it starts Really, the the feeling and the vibration and the energy is us actually feeling it manifested into reality as opposed to just a concept that a lot of spiritual teachers like myself throw around. We're actually feeling and seeing that we are in the Aquarian age and the Aquarian age will last for about 2000 years. Man, oh man, I missed you guys. I really did. It was so great, though, to be able to take some time off and to allow all of the energy to start building in me. Here in the north, this is this is yin season. So this is really a time of rest. And right now as this podcast is coming out, we are in the last week of sacred season that starts every year on December 12th and it lasts through the last week of January. So we are in the very final moments of sacred season. We are in a portal from January 23rd to January 27th. There's so many incredible, exciting astrological and energetic happenings this year that you are going to feel it. You're going to see it and you're going to feel it and you're going to feel it manifested into your reality. We're no longer going to feel like we are the weirdos in the corner who are like, what's your sign? We're now going to be mainstream. And that feels so good because for a long time, many of us were kind of fringe or, you know, weird, whatever that means to you. We're going to start seeing all that we have brought into this reality as starseeds and light workers, light leaders, luminaries, galactic souls from all over this universe, and maybe even from a few other universes. We're going to start seeing that energy manifested into the mainstream. I personally already see it all over you know, social media, there's like spiritual TikTok, spiritual Instagram, like more people than ever before know about the energetics and sense energy and feel that energy is actually playing the, the number one role, right? It's, it's like pull back the curtain and there's the Wizard of Oz and it was energy and it was us and it was us the whole time. So it's really been very exciting. Um, thank you. I feel like I should say thank you for letting me have time off, even though I decided to take time off from the podcast and just be really, really present. I think it's been since October, since you and I have had like a motherfucking chat, <laughs> a motherfucking chat where I just bring all of my learnings and teachings to the table Some of you guys recognize that this is the annual birthday episode. I wasn't going to skip it. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going for as long as this podcast and this stream of consciousness is still going through. And 
According to my higher levels, there's there's no sign that it's going to let up. We've simply calibrated into a higher octave, a higher frequency, and that's what I spent a lot of my time off doing. I had the most beautiful December. It was like one of the best holiday seasons I've had in a long time. I felt so much magic. I felt so in flow with the energies, with manifestation, with creating magic here on earth. That is part of who and what we are. And I truly, truly got to just feel it and be present with it. And it was not external. Nothing external happened to me. Everything was internal. It was me really calibrating, getting into the nuance of the energy, adjusting, shifting, allowing myself to become a master energy alchemist. And I got to see and experience so much magic manifest and create it into my reality. So it starts internal and we see it reflected externally. It was beautiful. I hope that you guys had an incredible holiday season. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024 for all the humans out there. Welcome to yin season for all of the northerners. Happy yang season for all of the southerners. And as many of you know, my birthday is at the end of December. Thank you so much for all of the birthday wishes. And I always knew that this would be the first episode coming back in. I definitely thought that the break was just going to be for the month of December. And it turns out that there was so much more coming through, especially in January. So we're going to talk about the Pluto moving out of Capricorn and uh, finally Pluto getting its fucking boot off of my neck after the last 15 years Honestly, Pluto in Capricorn for the last 15 years has been what I will always call like the millennial dilemma or the millennial trauma. So Pluto is an incredibly powerful planet and it moves super slowly. It was in Capricorn for the last 15, 16 years and it will be in Aquarius for the next 20 years. It will have one little blip this year where it's going to come back into Capricorn. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm just, I'm just ready to move on and to allow my energy to really expand. And as I was channeling about that great change, a lot of you guys who keep up with me on social media, on Instagram, I'm on there every single day, you know, to to some people's despair, but to many others' happiness, I'm on there every single day. So if you're ever looking for me, you can find me at I am the Wellspring. And really what ended up taking up so much of my energy in January was that Pluto moved back into Capricorn from January 1st to January 20th. And it was just like pounding. Like it was just brutal. I felt like I was in the ring with like a heavyweight and it was, it was pretty brutal. It was like, let's review everything that's happened in your life over the last 15 years. Okay. I'm 32 now. So it's like, go back to when you were like 17. I don't want to go back to when I was 17. I don't want to go back to my early 20s. I really have fallen so much in love with my life since about 28, 29 years old. So if you don't love your life yet, trust me, it gets way better the older that you get. And so we had to go back and review all this stuff. And like it was like final cord cutting. And the reason I call it the millennial dilemma or the millennial trauma is because Pluto is really a generational planet. For all of the millennials, Pluto was in Scorpio when we were born. And so that's where you're going to find Pluto in your birth chart. And Pluto is exalted in Scorpio because they're they're best friends, right? Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio and they just love each other. And yet at the same time, it's kind of like double dark daddy vibes. And so this is why millennials have that like tinge of despair in our energy. You know, it's why we were like the emo generation and we have all this trauma and we were listening to like sad rock music and, you know, uh, My Chemical Romance and, and all of that kind of 
vibes <laughs> in our youth because we had that imprintation of Double Dark Daddy. I'm just going to call it that, okay? Double Dark Daddy, Scorpio, and Pluto together. And when it entered into Capricorn in 2008, we were all like just figuring out like who we were, if we were going to go to college, if we were going to, you know, get a job, what were we going to do with ourselves? For most of us, the only life that we know has been Pluto and Capricorn. Capricorn rules the workspace, the the jobs, like what you believe about work, which is why over the last four and five years, we've had this huge shift from millennials being really dissatisfied with their jobs. You know, we're always the ones making a joke about, you know, pointless emails, pointless meetings, bad bosses, not getting paid enough, and just general dissatisfaction with our jobs. But also we've been the ones who are like, I want to work from home. I want something more flexible. I want to become my own boss. I want to start my own business. I want to run things myself. Like, I want to find a different way to make money. That started with us. We were the original content creator that started getting paid for the, you know, photos on Instagram and then it became videos and now there's so many different things. All of that energy came from the millennial generation going through a Pluto transit in Capricorn. And now we're done. And now we are fucking done. I felt such a like sigh of relief when Pluto moved into Aquarius on January 21st, 22nd, depending on where you are. Just this sigh of relief, just this this feeling truly like someone had their boot on my throat, like I was on the ground and like I wasn't at my full power. And my guides had told me this for a long time. They're like, there's going to come a point in the energy when you're going to be returned to your full power, when you're going to be able to unleash yourself on this world, (laughs) you know, hopefully for the highest and greatest good of all. And that's when there will no longer be like the kink in the hose. And man, it just felt so good to like get that boot off my throat, stand up, flex, full power, return to me and just feeling so incredibly powerful and embodied and confident and no more bullshit It's going to be the most incredible next 20 years, especially like younger Gen X, all of the millennial generation, some of those who are heavily, who are in Gen Z, who are heavily influenced by millennials. The next 20 years are going to be absolutely incredible. Your creations are going to take off. Your life is going to take off. You're suddenly going to know what you want to do with yourself. You're suddenly going to have so much clarity around work and business and what it means to you to create and experience a money as an energetic transaction. Those were all of the hardships that we experienced with Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto destroys. Pluto breaks down. It does not rebuild. The rebuilding happens nearly immediately once Pluto moves on. But anyone who's ever built their own house or their or built a building from bottom to top, you know that you have to demolish the old building. You don't want to use the old building. So there has to be a demo crew that comes through, but the demo crew is not the one that rebuilds it all. It's a different crew. Now we're in that energy. So congratulations. I'm so happy for all of us. So for these transits, you know, like the Pluto moving into Aquarius, the Kali Yurga, which happened on January 15th, there wasn't a lot that you needed to do. I definitely think that Capricorn season is the best season to set goals and to write down whatever goals and do whatever manifestation creation ritual that you feel called to do because in so many ways Capricorn is the goal master like they will they will bring you to all of your goals and help you achieve all of your goals it's that energy. So I think that is something that can be done during Capricorn season and if you missed it don't worry about it just like take a few minutes and do it now. It's not truly the beginning of the energetic year until we enter into Aries season in the next couple of months. So there was really nothing that you needed to do except be present in your life, be the master commander and creator of your reality, 
and I guess binge more podcast episodes. This is going to be such an intense, like, I'm bringing it to this episode. You need to put your seatbelt on, please. (laughs) You need to sit down, put your seatbelt on, put your tray in an upright and locked position because this fucking crystalline Lightbringer jet is about to take off. I'm bringing it, if you've never listened to one of my birthday episodes 30 times, 31 times, and now 32 times around the sun, I bring 32 codes to this podcast episode, the 32 things that I learned, the 32 top downloads of the previous year for me, and these are extra intense. They're at the level that I feel so incredibly proud of myself to be fully understanding and integrating codes that in the past couple of years, like I was not getting it with my mentors and teachers. Like they would, they would transmit the code and I'd be like, I don't get it. I don't. And now it's like, I fucking get it. So I think that if you're here in this now moment, you are ready for these codes. And if some of them don't land, if some of them trigger you, you're welcome. That's a gift. If some of them don't land or you don't know what to do with it or you don't get it, don't worry about it. The code is multidimensional which means that once you receive it, it is going to be burrowing its way into your energy field, activating all necessary codes around it in order for you to receive the full integration. Have I told you that I missed you? It just feels so good to be back here with you. I feel like you're you're all just hanging out. This is the first episode that I'm recording in my new office setup, which is also the recording studio. And I feel like you guys are all here with me. And I just love all the little, you know, notes. Um, Someone told me today, like, I'm waiting patiently for the podcast to return. Uh, Someone else told me, like, I I miss the podcast so much. I know you're taking a break and take as long as you need, but I just wanted to tell you how much it meant to me. Others have said, I just found your podcast. I probably had that the most during December. So many of you saying uh, that you had just found the podcast and you were binging and you were trying to catch up. And so a lot of you are in that moment of catching up and it's like, okay, now we go again. So if you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate every single download and every moment of your time that you allow me to transmit these codes, fulfill my soul mission and purpose on this planet, in this incarnation. All is one, all is complete, all is done. You are ascended. It's really just a matter of me reminding you that. Yes, dear one, I know. I see you so much. And again, I just love and appreciate you guys so much. Are you ready for it? I'm ready for it. Let's fucking go. P.S. You may want to write these down. Number one, the first code, which is actually a divine download that I received. I think this one was late at night, which is when all the best ones come through. The fractal of the I am that is me is a song being played across the multiverse. Let that sink. So, man, you guys, the other thing I've been doing these past couple of months, I've been hanging out on parallel earths, talking to parallel versions of me. It is so beyond, it is so beyond anything. I don't even have words for the experience. I went into an activation one day and I'm going to tell the full story and talk about all of the parallel earths that I visited, all of the parallel versions of me. Most of them were on earth. One was on a different planet, but these are all parallel versions of myself. So they're not necessarily past or future lifetimes. They're actually parallel planets. And so they don't exist in this exact format of our universe. They exist in a parallel version of this universe. It gets a little complicated, but anyways, I've been hanging out with them and it's the most surreal experience to meet other versions of yourself who don't look like you, but the moment that you meet them telepathically, you know that it's you. 
And that's really where this download came from. The fractal of the I am that is me is a song being played across the multiverse. Your energy is so much more than just this incarnation. Not only do you have past parallel, future parallel versions of yourself, a multiverse version of yourself, multiple versions of yourself in all other universes, but you also have parallel planets that exist inside of the same universe that are also parallel versions of you. This is truly an infinite universe so incredibly cool. So I will be sharing that in an upcoming episode about the parallel Earths. We thought that there were no parallel Earths. We thought that there was one that had been destroyed. And man, I went into an activation and got thrown out of my body into parallel Earths and went full throttle like someone had just tossed me and I went skipping through all of these parallel Earths that I had no idea existed. And honestly, I don't think very many people on this planet, at least absolutely no one that I know, knows that they exist. So there is truly so much more to you than meets the eye. Code number two, we are in an ascension because we have made a descent. This was one of the greatest teachings that I brought forth in my course, Activate Illuminate, and it was discussing the descent that the soul makes to reach this point in consciousness, the furthest point from pure source energy, which we have been experiencing on this planet for the last 7,000 years. Thankfully, it's a very short journey to the farthest part of our experience from source, and then we get to spend the rest of our time making the ascent, rising back into consciousness from whence we came. There is a reason why you feel like you've had past lifetimes that were higher dimensional, higher frequency, that you were at a higher point in consciousness, and yet you were not actually in your ascension. You were in the descent. We make an as- a descent from that pure source crystalline consciousness all the way down through dimensions. This is a process that I channeled and that a group of angels took me through the entire like creation, everything that happens from the soul's first breath, from the soul's first awareness, and then how they choose the universe that they want to go into, how they choose the planets, and then they're guided through smaller galaxies until they get to bigger and more complex galaxies on their journey called the Descent. I can't wait to teach you guys all about that. I'm going to be doing that again in an upcoming episode. But number two, the code is we are in an ascension because we have made a descent. Let that sink in. Code number three, all versions of you exist already simultaneously. They're simply not yet activated. This is an incredible code to really start to write down and let it get into your consciousness if you are wanting to become a different version of yourself. If you feel stuck in your love life, your work life, your friendships, where you live, your family life, any area, there is actually so many other versions of you. And I'm not talking about parallel earths or the multidimensional self. I'm talking about inside of you, of this current avatar it's like a Russian doll and you can continue flipping through those versions, getting to truer and more authentic and more embodied versions of yourself where you actually experience uh, the highest frequency timeline in all of those areas. And it's just more you. All versions of you already exist. So it's kind of like going into your closet and changing outfits. It's the same you but it's a different vibe. It's a different energy. We all have our outfits that are like business, that's like serious, that's going on the first date, that's casual, that is going to hang out with your friends, going to hang out with your family. Like, I wouldn't care if my family saw me in this, but I would never go here in that. So you have that ability to change into deeper and deeper and deeper versions of yourself. And the process of that is through activation. It is not 
through becoming a false self. It is not through insincerity. It is not through trying to be something that you're not. It is not trying to be like others. It's a process of activating a different zero point frequency within yourself that allows that version to come forward that is the most true, authentic version of your soul song. This is why I have gone away from doing a lot of quantum healing. So I was doing quite a few of those towards the end of 2023 and just starting in uh, the eclipse season and into December and now in January, I am mostly doing activations because I learned this process of kind of the Russian doll and learning how to do an activation that starts to shift all of those versions of you that are less authentic to get through to a more authentic version of yourself. So it's like a natural organic process. It is not a false process. It is not about becoming something that you are not. It is rather shedding some of the external versions getting to a more internal. The more internal you get, the more embodied, the more confident, the more clear you are on who you are, who you want to be, how you want to be, what you want to be. And honestly, that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't fucking matter what other people want you to be. It doesn't matter what your partner wants you to be. It matters who you want to be. And we're going to talk more in a moment about learning how to trust yourself to trust your heart. Number four, you are the key code to every activation. Your authenticity is the key that unlocks each new version of self. This is so crucial for when you go into activations with myself or anyone else, that they are not activating you to be like them, that they are actually activating authenticity within yourself that allows more and more of your highest truth to come forward and to be felt and experienced and realized by you, by your consciousness, by your awareness. And this was a code that I did not get for so long. My mentor would always say, you are the key code. You are the key code. And I was like, oh my God, I'm the key code. I don't know what the hell that means. And really the emphasis is not on key code. The emphasis is on you. You are the key code. You are the activation. Your authenticity, your highest truth, your highest power, the highest exalted version of you, which is just a more authentic version of yourself. Honoring the truth of who you are in every single way. Let each and every one of these be like a piece of the puzzle. Because once you get to the end of these 32, you're going to see how I created a puzzle that actually makes a picture. And it's, it's really going to be its own activation for your highest truth, for your highest authenticity, and your highest timelines. Code number five, if you don't claim who you are and what you're allowed to do, be, have, and create in this lifetime, no one will. No one is coming to save you. No one is coming to change you. No one is coming to do anything to you against your will. Everything that's ever happened in your reality is by and through your will. All the things that we feel like, I didn't plan that. I didn't want that to happen to me. It was such a horrible thing. Most of those things were catalysts that you planned before you came into this incarnation. Most of the villains in your life are actually the heroes and the angels when you actually get to the other side. And you're like, wow, you helped me reach a level of truth within myself that I never would have reached if that horrible thing hadn't happened, if that death, if that bankruptcy, if that breakup, if that, you know, getting laid off or getting fired or your business going under, whatever hardship you have faced in your life, and I know we've all faced different levels of hardship, the deeper the level of hardship, the more advanced you came to be in this lifetime, which doesn't make it hurt any less but it helps you understand that you came here to be a master. You are not helpless. You are, in fact, so incredibly powerful. All the universe existing within you at this present moment. So if you don't claim who you are, 
your truth, your authenticity. Let it change every moment. Let yourself change. Let yourself shed those layers by day, by hour, by minute, by moment, by every new experience, new creation, new interaction, until you're just this flaming light being, burning like the sun, like 10,000 suns. Flame does not stay the same. It is ever changing. It is ever burning. Allow yourself to change. Claim in each new moment of awareness who you are, what you're allowed to do, what you're allowed to be, what you're allowed to have, what you're allowed to create in this lifetime. Because I promise you, you're in charge of your universe. No one is coming to boss you around. The bosses and the people in charge and the people who say how things are, all is illusion. You and your awareness is the only thing that is real. That's it. We call it real reality. Real? What is real? All of this is just vibrating energy. The only thing that is real is your awareness. You get to claim yourself. You get to claim, you get to declare, and you get to change. You're not a rock. If you wanted to stay the same for this entire lifetime, you would have been born a rock. And guess what? You're not. You're an organic being of light. And that leads us to the next question that you will inevitably ask, which is key code number six. The question was never, or at least not productively, how do I? This is the question that our mind always wants to ask first, which is like, wow, all of that sounds really great. So how do I? How do I? How do I do it? The question was never, how do I? It is always, who do I need to become in order to create or experience X, Y, Z in my life? It's not how do I get the job. It's not how do I find my life purpose. It's who do I need to become to experience my life purpose? Who do you need to become? The becoming is always first. The action is always second. And we really don't powerfully and purposefully create our lives until we first see ourselves as creator beings. So the being is always first. Who am I is such a more productive question than how do I? Who do you need to become in order to create and experience all that you desire? That in itself is like a whole masterclass. Like you could take that one question and you could start answering it for every area of your life that you want to change or see growth or see uh, productive results in. You could just take that one question and ask yourself, and I guarantee you, your higher levels are going to start answering immediately. This is the question that your higher levels are waiting for you to ask, because first and foremost, we have to see ourselves as the creators of our reality. It's about who you are being before you take the action step. Once you have become it, once you believe that about yourself, once you even embrace it, it doesn't even have to be at 100%, but once you even begin the process of asking, who do I need to become? It's like the gates of heaven open for you and your higher levels are like finally asking the right question. Let us pour out all of this love and support and these answers and this guidance and these signs and all of these way showers to guide you in your becoming as opposed to your doing. Key code number seven Take your manifestations off the pedestal. Oh, Lordy, this is so fucking good. Your manifestations have to be equal to you in order for you to experience them in your created reality. Anything that is put up higher or above you will not be created or manifested into your reality. This is why so many people don't experience the things that they want because they think that it's actually a future version of themselves experiencing it instead of you allowing it to be the you that is right now. We don't have to wait. There doesn't have to be 
time. Time, we are being released from time that started in 2020. And trust me, by the time you and I are out of this planet, out of this earth, time will be like the the thing furthest from our mind. But an example of putting your manifestations on the pedestal is putting your manifestations in the future and saying, that's for a future better version of myself. That's for a more knowledgeable version. That's for someone who is stronger or wiser or more powerful or more courageous or they've got all their shit together. So I'm going to put it with them. And for those who struggle with low self-worth, low self-esteem, thinking that they're not good enough, that they're not worthy enough, I mean, just wait till you get to one of my future codes. But what we do when we have those feelings is we start putting our manifestations on the top shelf and saying, like, that's for someday when I'm good enough. That's for someday when I'm special enough. You decide. You decide. When we take our manifestations off the pedestals, they become equal to us. And then they start to create inside of our reality very quickly. Which brings us to key code number eight. Take God off the pedestal. This was such a powerful code that I taught in the final transmission, which was like my top codes of 2023. It's such a powerhouse course. Take God off the pedestal. Like while you're at it, take God off the pedestal. So often we create this God in our mind And we put them up high above us. And the question that so many humans ask is, if there is a God, why do they allow all these bad things to happen? We even do this with our spirit guides. Once we start of kind of getting out of that religious programming, we start to get into, you know, if my spirit guides love me, why did they allow this bad thing to happen to me? It's the petulant child with the parent, the parent-child dynamic. And... The most asked question of any human is is really like, if there is a God, like why? Why does God allow these horrible things to happen? And you know what? The answer is you. You are God. You. Think of all the horrible things that you are capable of doing. Think of all the horrible things that you may have done in your life. Think of all the wars. All the killing all of the atrocities that happen. I know you think it's not you because maybe it's not you in this lifetime. Trust me, you've been there too. And it's not a guilt trip. It's a reality check. It's a consciousness check. The answer is you. You. You happened to this planet. You happened to the universe. You happened to the galactic wars. You happened You are God. So all of the horrible atrocities that exist in our world and in this universe and that have ever happened and that will ever happen are a capability of God, are God's shadow self, our shadow self. And our path back to wholeness is also God's path back to wholeness. So there's no point in having ourselves or a separate God entity up on a pedestal. That's just an illusion that we create. Once we release God from the pedestal, we start to realize I am God and I am capable of horrible atrocities. So now I'm starting to realize that I have some responsibility. You start to look at your hands and realize all the things that you're capable of with these hands. You can either do horrible atrocities as God or you can do miracles. Become love. You can heal with these hands. The choice has always been yours. The responsibility has always been yours. You've just been asleep to it. And now you are waking up. There is no point in having ourselves or a separate God on a pedestal because all is one. If we truly believe all is one, then we know there is no separate entity that is God. We are God. Key code number nine, there is no such thing as big or small creation. All is creation. This one always gives me chills because if you think that there are some creations, some experiences that are just so big, too big for you, 
or it's, it's a lot of money, or it's a big job, or it's a big move, then again, we always keep it up on that pedestal. But the truth is, there's no such thing as big or small creation. All is creation. That cup of coffee that you made this morning is creation. Your energy and your actions move together to create it. And when you start to bring your awareness to these seemingly micro creations, you start to realize the power that is you, the power that is at play at all times, everywhere, all around you, no exceptions. Key code number 10. Everything you'll ever experience is an extension of you and your energy. You're only ever experiencing more you. It's all an expression of you. Everything you ever have, you are, you ever will experience is an extension, an expression of you. It's you. Again, it's like, what happened? You. You happened. It's all an expression of you. Everything in your reality So when we see that, again, that's a masterclass in one question, like looking around yourself, like what is it that I really dislike and that displeases me inside of my reality? And why is it an expression of me? Why did I create that? What is trying to be seen or understood or loved through me, through my awareness that became that expression of self? Likewise, when we look at manifestations or creations that we think are too good for us. All of that desire and that ability to create the experience is already inside of you. It's already there. That version of you already exists. That energy is already there. It's just more you. (laughs) Some of you are staring at your hands right now. You're like, it's me? Yeah, it's you. Your dwelling, your home, your house, your job, your car, your career, all of your relationships, all of it. It's just more you. It's all an expression of you. You're never experiencing really any energy outside of yourself. I know it seems like we are interacting and to some, in some realm, we are interacting with other people's universes. But the truth is, we are always experiencing through our conscious awareness, our universe, ourselves, our creations. It's all an expression of you. Which brings us to key code 11. Those who struggle with manifesting, manifesting their desires, who have many desires that have not come through to fruition, struggle with expressing themselves. Another way to think of this is Everything that I desire to experience that I somehow feel that I cannot experience is a part of myself that I'm struggling with expressing. Usually out of fear. Fear of what other people will think. Fear of judgment. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of not being able to handle it or to hold it. That desire that seems so big or so far away. It's a part of yourself that you are on the quest of learning how to express that part of yourself. Those who struggle with manifesting struggle with expressing themselves. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a way that really taught me this this lesson because I, I grew up in a home where you were not allowed to have opinions. You were not allowed to be different. You were not allowed to express yourself in any different way. You were allowed to be the same. You were allowed to believe what the parentals believed. You were allowed to do what the parentals told you to do. Not what they did, but what they told you to do. And so in many ways, I set myself up for having a very locked up expression so that I could learn how to express myself. So that I could learn how to break those illusion chains. So I could learn how to become right? Which has been one of the key codes. It's not how do I, it's who do I need to become. Those who struggle with manifesting, struggle with expressing themselves. This one always like just makes my heart twinge 
because I remember so many times being told to shut up. It's a journey to learn how to express yourself. And honestly, I highly recommend starting a podcast. It's probably been the number one way that I've learned how to public speak, how to speak in classes and master classes for an hour, for an hour and a half long, without even glancing at my notes, just honestly full stream of consciousness. And how to talk to all of you. Learning how to express yourself is a journey, but at least now, if you know that that's you, that that code speaks to you, now you know where to start. Small things, little ways of expressing yourself more and more every day, more authenticity, more you, more you, more you. No one's going to get sick of it because in your universe, you're the only one who exists. Key code number 12. (laughs) This is one of my favorites. This came through to me in, I want to say December of 2023 and... It was such a great moment because I was teaching wealth identity, right? And it was like, who do you need to become your most authentic self, your most authentic self who is wealthy and who handles money, that unique identity that already exists within you. And so we were all tapping into that and we were all manifesting so much money. And there were so many times when we were manifesting too much money, we didn't even know what to do with it. Uh, I always love to say like we manifested more money than we can spend and It was just such an incredible time. It's such an incredible course, too. You can also get that on my website if you're someone who really wants to go, you know, balls to the wall with money. And this this key code came through to me as one of my conversations with my guides. Key code number 12. Spirituality made me materialistic and I'm happy about it. There was this moment for me and for much of my life that I have felt guilty about loving physical things and loving beautiful things, like beautiful things that there's no rhyme, there's no reason, there it doesn't operate in the realm of need. Of course, I don't need it. It's beautiful. I want it. I want to experience it. I want to have it because I love it because it's beautiful. And I think that that really is seeing the world through God's eyes. Like why else would why else would we have created this whole universe and multiverse and experience it in this way? But for so much of my life, I was always squashing down that side of myself, always hiding it, always feeling guilty about it, always not sharing it. And I remember teaching wealth identity in my guides. I was doing all of the transmissions and I was like, well, I don't want to sound, you know, materialistic, even though I fucking love, you know, all the beautiful stuff, the designer stuff, all of it. Like that is one of the truest expressions of myself. And my guides just looked at me and they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't want to be materialistic. They were like, what are you doing? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be, you know, not materialistic. I'm trying to be spiritual, like, duh. And they were like, Annie, what the hell are you doing? You came here to express yourself in a 3D world. If you wanted everything to be etheric, You would be in the 12th dimension, not the third dimension. And it was such a wake up call. It was like someone splashed cold water all over me. And I realized, holy shit, I did come to a 3D world to express myself. Which means that being materialistic, having a lot of shit, expressing yourself however you see fit in the material 3D world, whatever is true and is authentic to you, go for it. That's what you came here for. You came here to create in a tangible way. And the, the example that my guides gave me is they're like, we can create a light ship with our mind, right? And I think that that is fucking awesome. That is so cool. I can't do that because I'm in the third dimension. They can do that because they're in other dimensions. They said, we can create this light ship with our mind. We express ourselves through this way. But you can drive a Ferrari. You can drive a Ferrari. Like, what are you doing? I was like, yeah, you know, whenever I am driving my car, you guys always like to like hop in and like project themselves into that experience. They think it's so cool. They love driving around in cars. (laughs) They love projecting into the experience. They love seeing it through my eyes. They're like, this is so cool. But we're not actually there in that dimension experiencing it. We're experiencing it through you. 
You're there. You can drive a Ferrari. So drive the Ferrari. So eat the food. So go to the fancy restaurant. So do the things that don't make any sense because you didn't come here to make sense anyway. You came here to create. You came here to be an expression of your truest and most authentic self. You didn't come here to be a spiritual fucking guru. Like, no offense to myself or anyone else, but I came here to express myself. Part of me is spiritual and the divine, but also I'm in a 3D reality, which means I get to express myself in the material world and it is fucking awesome. Ever since I had that realization, you know, I was telling everyone on my Instagram stories, it was like, it was like I was an Avenger and like every manifestation was just like fly into my hands, you know, and it was just left, right, center, so many manifestations that had just been kind of sitting on the sidelines just came through all at once. It was incredible and, and it still is in the ripple effects of that. Even now, now that I've embraced that part of myself, spirituality made me materialistic and I'm really happy about it and I honestly... I get where people are coming from when they are anti-materialism and they're like, you know, you don't have to be all about the blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, look at your life. (laughs) Look at your life. I don't want your life. Like, no thanks. I love beautiful things. I love things that don't make any sense. I have this like crystalline mushroom on my desk. I showed it to you guys on Instagram. I don't need it. It doesn't make any sense. It's beautiful and I love it. And everyone who walks into my office is like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So let go of the judgment about the 3D world. You came here to express yourself in a 3D world. Unleash yourself. Key code number 13. At some point, you have to stop being afraid and you're going to have to start trusting your heart. This came through as a journal entry after I had that realization about being afraid of being seen as materialistic when truly I wanted for so long to express myself deeply and authentically and loudly and in such big ways in the 3D world. And I realized that part of it was me not trusting my heart because when you think of someone as being materialistic, you think that they don't care about you. If I didn't care about you guys, I wouldn't be here recording this. So we get to a point, as a being going through ascension, choosing ascension for ourselves, choosing to bring in the higher realms through us into a 3D reality, we get to a point where we have to trust our heart. We have to trust that money and material items are not going to turn you evil. They're not going to turn you to the dark side. You have to trust your heart. You have to trust yourself. You have to trust you because there's no one else to do that for you. There's no one else who's going to come along and be like, let's check on you. Oh, yep, you're still good. Oh, you're still being of light. Oh, you're still in the path of service to others. Good job. Okay, keep going. You have to trust yourself. You have to trust your heart. No one can do that for you. What I wrote in my journal, I brought this excerpt with me. I'm no longer going to be virtue signaling. People can think that I'm a fucking fiend if they want. It will no longer be getting a reaction from me. I don't need or want to explain my goodness when it's someone else's sin. If there's someone out there that's like, I'm still going to hold on to the belief that materialism and having material things or having a lot of money, having nice shit is bad, that's their sin. But it's not mine anymore. I don't need or want to explain my goodness and my heart when it's someone else's sin, someone else's judgment that they're imposing on me. I know my heart. I trust my heart. I know my goodness. I know my intentions. I trust myself to be able to handle a lot of money, a lot of beautiful material objects, a lot of expressions of myself, and to express the part of myself that wants to help and serve others on their journey. 
I trust that all of that can exist at the same time and that I've fucking got it. I've got it. I've got it. So often, it's like we just don't trust ourselves. We're so afraid of the dark. We're so afraid of the shadow. We're so afraid of the ways that people perceive us. All is illusion. You are the creator. You are the one. And that brings us to key code number 14. This was a really, really great, like, shadow work code that came through. And I've grappled for a lot of my journey with feeling not good enough, feeling not worthy enough, feeling like I'm doing things wrong, like I'm just, you know, not it. Like I just, like I'm somehow failing myself, failing the people around me. And I had this beautiful revelation come through and it was kind of along the same stream of consciousness. And it was, nope, you're not good enough. You're not good enough or worthy enough. Some part of you will always be in the shadow. Some part of you will always be the darkness and capable of great evil. It will always exist. Always. So it's like if you're if you're worried about being good enough, being worthy enough or trying to do all of this inner work to feel good enough, to feel worthy enough, you will always be going through that circle and that cycle because the answer will always be you will you will always find some part of yourself that is not good enough, that is not worthy enough, that is a total fuck up and a failure. You'll always find it because you're looking for it. You're looking for it in your energy. You're looking for it in your field. And wherever you look, wherever the gaze of God goes, it will find what it desires. So if you are subconsciously desiring proof that you're not good enough, you're going to find it. It exists. It is there. It will be created and manifested and brought to your attention from your shadow self. And you can go in loops and loops and loops for all time of trying to feel good enough, trying to feel worthy enough, or telling yourself you're good enough, telling yourself you're worthy enough. And I'll never forget the day that I stumbled upon one of my just most incredible mentors ever. And the first thing that I read from her was, it was never about being good enough or worthy enough. And again, for a long time, for like two years, I didn't get it. I didn't get it until these other codes that I've just given you before were already in place for that activation for me to understand. You're fucking right. There's always going to be a shadow self available if I go looking for my shadow self. The not good enoughness, the unworthiness will always exist in the shadow self. If I'm looking for it, I know where to go find it. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That part of you will never be good enough or worthy enough. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because of key code number 15. We didn't come here to be good or bad. We came here to create. Yeah, I know. That defies everything that you thought you knew about existence. Because the puritanical culture, and in all religions, got... I mean, it fucking got to us, right? It got to us. We thought and we've been taught and we've been trained and we've been encoded that we are here to be good, that we're here to find our goodness, that we're here to to find our holiness. But in truth, in actuality, the deeper that I go in creation, in the multiverse, in the higher realms and the lower realms... I realized that we didn't come here to be good or bad. We came here to create. That's it. And that's the truth that my guides have continuously pointed me towards again and again and again. It's why they've never encouraged me to go on a healing journey. I learned that from humans, that I needed to go on a healing journey and heal all of these parts of myself. And you guys have heard me talk about in 2023, I let all of that go. It's like there's there's nothing broken about me, but if I go looking for something broken, I will find it. I will create it. If I go looking for the shadow self, I will fucking find them. My guides never encouraged me to go on a healing journey. They always encouraged me to consider who I am being and to create, to express myself. It was always about 
me. Because I'm the only one inside of my reality. How can I then begin to compare myself when there's no one else inside of my reality? You'll never be in my reality. Just as we can never see the world through other people's eyes, we can only empathize. We can only compare similar experiences. But even the people that you love the most, that you feel the closest to, They're having their own reality. You're having your own reality. There's no one else inside of it to compare to. So you didn't come here to be good or bad. You came here to create. Key code number 16. This is one of the greatest codes that I will ever, 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 that will ever come out of my mouth and that had the biggest impact and change in my life in 2023. This, I mean, if I look back and there's only one thing that I could teach you, there's only one code that I could give you, this is what I would give you because it changed my life so drastically that I know it can change your life so drastically. And if you want to go deeper in this golden age money masterclass is where I, I took this in through like five hours of masterclass sessions and we went really really deep into creation especially around money and around this code key code number 16 the biggest and best mindset shift and truly the shift that i made in 2023 that changed my life i've made is shifting out of need and operating from want only So I no longer operate in my mind, in my energy, and in my actions from need. I don't think about, do I need this? Do I need that? Or I don't need this? I don't need that? I don't experience those thoughts. And if they come up, I toss them off like they're they're garbage because they are. They are a part of the old 3D world and the energy doesn't support operating from need anymore. I operate from want only. Do I want this? Do I want that? Because what you'll find is in the higher octave of creation from want and desire, one of your wants and desires is for all of your needs to be met. So when you operate from that higher octave, all of your needs are already included because it's a desire that you have for your needs to be met. And you get to experience all of your wants and desires as well. When I made this mindset shift and decided that every day in all of my decisions, I was going to ask myself, do I want this? Do I want this? Do I want this? And it was going to operate and honor the yes or the no. Everything changed. That's when I started manifesting more money than I could spend. That is when I started manifesting all of my desires left, right, and center. That is when all of my relationships started to have this new, fresh 5D frequency to them. That's when I felt more rested, more embodied, more filled with my power and all of my business creations became next level because I was operating from a higher octave frequency. And truly the only barrier that anyone will ever face when making this mindset shift, which this is moving out of a 3D mindset into a 5D mindset, the only barrier is really just your fear that somehow you are a toddler inside and that You will not want to go to work and you will not want to pay your bills and you will want to eat donuts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If your emotional intelligence is at the level of a toddler, that's probably what will happen to you. But my guess is that if you're here listening to me and my energy and my frequency, you're not a toddler inside. You're not that immature you're not that childlike and that if you try it out you will actually see that you make decisions better for yourself than you have ever made before when you start operating from want instead of need key code number 17 wanting is not enough alone Every desire must be paired with an action step. 
We can want it, want it, want it and say an internal yes, yes, yes. But if I don't pull the trigger, if I don't take the action step, if I don't actually do the thing that I want, nothing is going to happen in my reality. Wanting is not enough alone. There has to be an action step because that brings us to key code number 18. The masculine and feminine are always in the dance of creation. You have nothing if you only have one or the other. The want and the desire is the high, higher octave 5D frequency of feminine. The action step that matches them is the 5D frequency masculine. And in order to create anything in this universe, you must have those two frequencies colliding together. This is E equals MC square. You can go down a whole rabbit hole teaching yourself that equation and how it is the answer to all of creation. The masculine and feminine are always in the dance of creation. They're a pair. You've got to have an action step for all of your desires. Key code number 19, you get what you allow. So why are you not allowing those things that you want? Again, another masterclass, another huge journal entry. You can take that one question. If I get what I allow, why am I not allowing the things that I want? You're going to come up with some brilliant answers about why you are cock blocking yourself from what you want and what you want to experience. And really, it always just comes back to the same old answer. It's the same dusty old answer. I'm afraid of me. I'm afraid of me. I'm afraid of me. I'm afraid of what people will think of me, which is just a long way of blaming someone else for you being afraid of what you'll think of you. I'm afraid of me. I'm afraid of my power. I'm afraid to become a being of light that is transmitting a higher frequency into the third dimension, expressing myself here. I'm afraid of what I came here to do. I'm afraid of myself. You're afraid of yourself because you're so fucking powerful that you can't even believe it. Like it can't even sink. It takes time. I know. I've been doing empowerment and power work for years. It takes time to grapple with the fact that you're so incredibly powerful in the things that you can create in this world, in this reality, in your reality. It's a, it's a bit of a mind trip. Like take some time to digest the fact that you're so powerful, but at the end of the day, you get what you allow. So why are you not allowing the things that you want? And the answer is some variation of I'm afraid of me. I'm afraid of myself. I'm afraid of how powerful I am. I'm afraid of the effect that I can have on the world. I don't trust my heart. I don't trust my desire to express myself in a way that is for the highest and greatest good for all and all includes me and everyone that I will ever touch with my presence on this planet. I'm afraid of myself. I'm afraid of my power. I'm afraid of my heart. I'm afraid of my darkness. So there's some grappling that you have to do. Some acceptance. Yes, you are a fucking villain. You are a villain. You are Sauron. <laughs> like, there is a version of you that could just destroy this planet, that could destroy everything. That power is in you. But how are you actually going to express yourself in that power? Is that the real you? Is that all there is? Are you just diabolical? I don't think so. I don't think so, because I see that same power in me. And I know that that's not the truest, most authentic version of myself. I know who I am. I trust my heart. To some people on this planet, I'm a witch and a devil-worshipping, you know, heathen. To some people, I'm the villain. To some people, I'm literally the devil. Like, just go ask the fundies out there, who is the devil? And they would be like, you know what? All those psychics, they're just so out there and they think of the aliens and they're talking to demons. Like, I've heard it all. I know my heart. I trust myself. I trust my creations. 
it doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't matter what other people think of you. You let it matter. You allow it. You get what you allow. So why are you not allowing the things that you truly want, you truly desire? The life you really want to live. Ask yourself that question. Allow yourself to answer it. That brings us straight into key code number 20. It's a huge emotional intelligence flex when you stop letting other people's behavior mean anything about you. Like full stop. Full stop. Someone else could be acting a fool, could be telling me, you know, last last year I dealt with like this this crazy incident where all of these people were attacking me for saying that I could channel raw. And and thankfully so many of you guys actually found me from that same comment and you you love this work and you love the channeling, you love what I do and I'm so glad that you're here. But in this same thread there was people that were like you are you need to be admitted somewhere, like you're talking to demons, you're talking to devils, you have like a mental illness. I mean every kind of insult that you can think of, of course. And I really learned from that experience like the growth of my emotional intelligence from that negative experience was that I stopped letting other people's behavior mean anything about me. And then I started to bring it closer. It was no longer strangers on the internet. I brought it closer and closer. And it was like, it no longer means anything about me when a friend is mistreating me. When a family member is mistreating me, I get to have my boundaries. I get to have my standards. It doesn't have to mean anything about me. It doesn't have to, I don't have to go down the guilt trip of like, oh, it must mean that I'm a bad person or I'm not good enough. I mean, all the stuff we've talked about today, letting go of all of that duality, but also letting people who want to live in that duality do their thing. It doesn't have to mean anything about me, but if you want to be in close proximity, you've got to be up to the frequency standards. Otherwise, you're out. Emotional intelligence work is one of the greatest things that I really dove into in 2023, and I'm excited to bring more of that to the podcast and hopefully to a free masterclass series soon because I think it's I think it's something we all need to dive into. Key code number 21, whatever your biggest struggle is, is where you are coded for the biggest success. Because the negative coding is equivalent to the available positive coding. Which means if you were to lay out all of the coding of all the negative things that happened, maybe with relationships, maybe that's been your big life struggle is relationships, and you were to lay out all of that coding, and you're like, I've got 45 miles of negative coding. That means that you have 45 miles of positive coding which is what would feel like success to you in that area. It's already built in. So you have the equivalent positive coding for whatever negative experiences you've already had in your life. This is like the best key code for figuring out what it is you truly desire to do with yourself in your life and your purpose is like whatever your biggest struggle has been is where you're coded for the greatest amount of success. Which brings us to key code number 22. Whatever comes easiest to you is what you should be paid the most for because it's your gift. This was an incredible code that I got from one of my mentors and it's been so easy on my journey to charge the least for the things that I'm so good at. That just comes so easy because I thought, well, there's there's less effort. It's so easy for me to channel, you know, 49 different beings in one hour. It's so easy. Like, oh, this is my talent. This is my skill. It's so easy to just give it all away. And it really hit home when she said, whatever comes easiest to you is what you should be paid the most for. Because that's your gift. That's your talent. That's what people are going to seek you out for. So don't be ashamed and don't be ashamed of being high end or high price or charging whatever the hell you want to charge. And that really brings us into key code number 23. I have no interest in being humble, but if I did, my humility, my humble self is accepting that I'm not here to serve everyone. 
So I don't like the word humble and it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. I don't think of anyone, in fact, I may even think a little less if someone's like, oh, they're just so humble or you're just so humble. You know what the definition of humble is? Someone who thinks little of themselves. I have no interest in being humble. I have no interest for praising someone else for being so humble. But the closest version of experiencing humility that I have is really and the emotional intelligence to realize and understand that I am not here to serve everyone. That in my arrogance and in my immaturity and in my emotional immaturity and in my spiritual immaturity... I believed and wanted to help everyone and ended up helping less people than I could have if I had accepted that I'm not here to help everyone. It's emotional immaturity and arrogance when we shapeshift ourselves to try and serve and help everyone possible, everyone who comes to us, instead of accepting that we are here to serve a certain group of people and that there are other light workers also on this planet that are here to serve other people that are maybe not our people. And to trust that if someone comes to you and they're like, I'm looking for this, instead of you shape-shifting yourself to be that, to trust that if you turn them away, that they're going to manifest the person that's actually here to help them with that. So I have no interest in this humility, being humble, and like the light worker who's so, you know, wearing rags and just, you know, like, oh, it's just donation only. Like, I could never ask you for anything. Like, I just want to help as many people as I can. In there is emotional immaturity and spiritual immaturity and a lack of trust. So I'm not here to serve everyone and neither are you. I'm here to serve a certain group of people. And the more that I'm focused on that and the more that I'm in the acceptance of that and the more that I don't get butthurt about the people who leave the community or stop listening or stop coming to classes or whatever because it's not right for them, the less butthurt I get about that, the more I actually get done and the more results I actually see for the people that I'm actually here to help. And I'm in the trust that those people are going to find me. And the more that I focus on that, the more of those people find me. And it's a better fit and a better fit and a better fit and a better match and a better match and a better match. And that leads us directly into key code number 24. Everything in our reality accelerates when we take full and complete responsibility for ourselves. I've been talking about responsibility a lot on my Instagram stories. There is this component of manifestation and creation and ascension where it's like you won't really go any further until you take full and complete responsibility for yourself. And that's not just in a negative way, but it's in all ways. In all ways. No exceptions. Taking full and complete responsibility for yourself. Taking full and complete responsibility for the things you have created and the things you haven't created. Taking full responsibility for the action steps that you have taken and that you haven't taken. Taking full responsibility for the shit that you allow into your reality versus the good things that you really, really desire and want that you do not allow into your reality. Taking responsibility for your emotional intelligence, taking responsibility for your spiritual maturity, taking responsibility for the way that you express yourself inside of this 3D reality. And I don't mean walking on eggshells. Mostly, especially when I'm talking to light workers, it's like all the things you haven't done because you're grappling with guilt and fear that you're not a good person and that you're going to like turn evil. I'd be hard-pressed to find someone in this community that I'm like, hey, stop being so evil all the time. Stop oppressing everyone around you. No, when I'm talking to a group of light workers, they're always grappling with the guilt and like how much they only want to be light and they don't want to ex- have acceptance of the shadow self at all. But everything in your reality 
can absolutely accelerate and take off and come through and become clear the moment that you sit down and say in your heart, in your mind, I take full and complete responsibility for myself, for my life, for my body, for my words, for my creations, for all the things I have done, for all the things I have not done, for all of the things that I have not allowed myself to do and all the things I have allowed inside of my reality. It's my responsibility. My mindset is my responsibility. My body is my responsibility. My health is my responsibility. All of it is me. All of it is an expression of me. All of it is coming from my universe. That is the moment that everything is going to take off for you. That's the moment that so many of your higher levels and spirit team is like, you have to, you have to have the responsibility piece in motion and in acceptance and in integrity in order for you to really access larger and larger amounts of energy, clarity on who you are. Key code number 25, spiritual knowledge is nothing without emotional intelligence. You can learn all the things. You can know every weird, esoteric, random, fringe, cult thing out there. You can know it all. I'm not really impressed anymore when people come to me and they're like, I know all of these things. I'm way more impressed with who you are being, which tells me, which is like a gauge for your emotional intelligence. Ascension is spiritual maturity and emotional intelligence. Those two things work in tandem to create your ascension process. Key code number 26, every feeling must be felt. This came from one of my journal entries and many of you know I had a really difficult summer. We had some really horrific things happen in my neighborhood And there was just so many feelings, so much fear that came up. And I really had to take time to process all of that. And this is what I wrote in my journal. Part of why we don't have a lot of emotional intelligence on this planet is because everyone is afraid of their emotions. But to be afraid of your emotions is to be afraid of your power. And to be afraid of your power is to be afraid of life itself. If you want to grow your emotional intelligence and develop it, you have to start feeling and examining and getting acquainted with your feelings, especially the ones you've been avoiding. Key code number 27, the tests, and I say that in quotation marks, the tests that we feel we are getting from the universe, more quotation marks, right? Because it's really just us are in fact parts of ourselves that are craving more love. When you go through a big evolution and you start to create things, you start to grow yourself and you start to take some action steps and you start to express yourself in this reality and you start focusing on who you are being, a lot of stuff is going to change and you're going to have some parts of yourself come up and you're going to wonder, is this a test from some angry God And the answer, at least from me, will always be no. It's a part of yourself that you are being presented with that is craving more love from you. More love, more love, more love. Love is not all goody two-shoes. Love is not even soft all the time. Sometimes love is a firm boundary Sometimes love is the ending of a relationship so that you can enter into a new phase of your life. There's so many different ways to express love to yourself. I can't tell you what will come up for you. I can only tell you that when you start to make these changes that we've been talking about today, when you start to integrate these codes and act on them and feel and experience them inside of yourself as part of highest truth, There's going to be some things that come up that feel really hard and you're like, why is this happening? I was doing so well. I have all of these revelations. I have all of these key codes. And really, it's just the little shadow parts that are like, we want to be loved too. We see you loving all those other parts of yourself in a new way. We want to be loved too. Key code number 28 
We all have our own infinite supply. Each of us has an infinite universe. Your universe. As a fractal of the I am, you have infinite supply, right? You may have heard of this before called the law of infinite supply. But really, we only get to access that part of ourselves when we start to accept that we are our own universe, that we are our own reality, and that we are the awareness of that reality and the creator and the master and the commander, and that there is no one coming along to boss us around or to tell us that we're not good enough or that we are good enough or that we're doing it right or that we're doing it wrong. You're here to create. And as part of that creation, you have your infinite supply. Infinite supply. Infinite you're not taking from anyone else on this planet. So many light workers are afraid of that. Again, afraid of yourself. But within your own universe, you have infinite supply. Key code number 29. Oh, this is one of the greatest ones. No exceptions is the frequency of wealth. I taught this in a powerhouse class in my course called The Final Transmission. No exceptions. I mean, we were all crying by the end of the wealth day when I, when I taught this code in depth. But the truth is that if you want to experience wealth, whether it's with money, whether it's with love, whether it's with anything, the frequency of wealth, right? The zero point of wealth is no exceptions because wealth implies all, more, everything, all of it. So there's no exceptions. There is this journey that we go on of accepting ourselves in totality, all of the things that have happened to us, all of the negative, all of the positive, all of the mistakes, all of the highs, all of the lows, when we are in the full and total acceptance of it, no exceptions, that is when you have hit the frequency of wealth. That is when the floodgates open. Key code number 30. Don't guard your mortal heart. Unleash it. This journal entry came from some of the difficult experiences that I had last summer. And this quote, I don't know who it's from, but it goes, May you never know the violence it took to become this soft. And my response to that quote was, May you never know the trauma I unpacked to heal this heart. May you never know the screams that filled the room so I could truly listen to you. And this is really about the childhood trauma, right? May you never know the violence it took to create someone who wanted to be soft, who want, who chose softness over the violence that they experienced in their childhood or from others. And for me, it was, you know, all of the trauma that I had to unpack to heal my heart so that you guys could experience this version of me, which I would never wish on anyone, but I'm so happy to offer it as part of my gift to this world. May you never know the trauma I impact to heal this heart. May you never know the screams that filled the room so that I could truly listen to you. Not feeling heard and seen was probably the thing that so many of us grapple with. Don't guard your mortal heart. Unleash it. Don't guard it. Sometimes, I know, a lot of you are going to need to go on that path of the healing journey. That's okay. There are other ways, the moment that you're ready, there are other ways to just be in the creation, to just be creation. But don't guard your mortal heart. Unleash it. Unleash yourself. 
just like I talked about at the very beginning with this Pluto movement into Aquarius, I feel like for so many of us, especially the millennial generation, we are going to be able to unleash the full capacity of our power and our hearts on this world to experience creation, happiness, love, joy, like we have never experienced it before, fulfillment, like we have never felt before. Don't guard your mortal heart. Unleash it. Key code number 31. Another one of the greatest codes that I taught, and I've taught this in the final transmission Activate Vision 2024, Golden Age, Money Master Classes, and Wealth Identity. We create the evidence first and always. We create the evidence. If you're waiting for signs and evidence, you will always be waiting. But if you go boldly and daringly and courageously out there with no evidence and decide that you will create the evidence, you understand what it means to be God. In that moment that you decide, I create the evidence, you understand what it means to be God. You understand what it took to create this universe with no evidence of how it would turn out. You understand what it took to create this planet with no evidence that it would turn out. You understand what it took to create the human species with no evidence of how they were going to be or how they were going to turn out. You understand what it takes to create anything in this world, anything you've ever seen or experienced when there was no evidence when there was nothing. That's the moment that you understand what it means to be God. Final key code number 32. Wanting is not enough, but I am enough. I am that I am is the statement of highest truth, highest love, highest power, highest wealth in every and all ways. I am that I am. I am enough. I have limitless supply in my universe. I get to unleash myself. I get to experience wealth with no exceptions. I get to give love to all the parts of myself that are craving it. I get to feel all of my feelings. I get to grow my emotional intelligence. I get to take full responsibility. I get to accept that I'm not here to serve everyone. I get to accept that my gift is the one that I should be paid the most for. I get to accept that my biggest struggle is where I'm coded for the most success. I get what I allow. I get to experience the dance of creation between the masculine and feminine. I get to pair every desire with an action step. I get to operate from want only. I get to accept that I came here to create. I get to experience the shadow of not being good enough or worthy enough. And I get to decide that it doesn't matter. I get to stop being afraid of myself. I get to express myself in the 3D reality. I get to express myself. I get to experience more of me. I get to remember that all is creation. I get to take God and myself off the pedestal along with all of my manifestations and all of my creations. I get to become more authentic more true, highest truth in every moment. I get to claim who I want to be, what I'm allowed to do. I get to be the key code to every activation. I get to be the authenticity that unlocks each new version of myself. I get to experience all the versions of me that exist already. I get to ascend 
because I have already made the descent. Because the fractal of the I am that is me is a song being played across the multiverse. And I am enough. Beautiful beings of divine light, I hope that you will share this episode with someone that you think would receive these codes and be activated by them. And you already know that you will see me on the next one.